Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com, as you guys know. So, I've decided to do something even though I wasn't going to. I came across this hard drive. Very little information for you. I came across this hard drive. It's a two terabyte hard drive. And the connector looks like this. I have never in my life seen a connector this bad. I mean, it's it's bad. And I really didn't want this hard drive to just go completely to waste. But I did want to know if anyone has ever come across this. Believe it or not, I had two people tell me already that they have seen something similar on a CD slash DVD drive. Uh, so, let me get you a, a little bit closer shot of this connector, with, try to get the light right, because it's just incredible how bad this connector really is. You can see these two wires are completely broke off. They were like that when I got started. These are starting to blister. Now the case that these are in was a compact unit. And it actually started heating up and burning the paint off the bottom side of the panel, which is incredible. That's an incredible amount of heat. Now, interestingly enough, the whole system still works. So I went ahead and removed the circuit board from the hard drive. And I'm going to give you some more really high definition details here. Oh, the lighting isn't very good, huh? Yeah, we'll get it there. Okay. So you can see what that looks like. And it did. It just completely melted that whole entire board. So, I actually have high confidence, because I looked this board over really well, and I have high confidence that this circuit board will still work if I solder a connector to it. So what I've done is I've gotten me a recycled connector here. Um, this is the style I'm going to use because it's uh, this is a E SATA or SATA E or whatever it is, but this is a normal, different, old style because that's what this was originally plugged into. So I think I can repair this. Now, if you look closely on this shot right here, let me try to get a better shot of that. It actually melted. There you can see it. It melted the pins off. It completely melted the pins off. That's how hot it got. So the connector technically didn't fail. The connectors unsoldered themselves. That's how hot they got. Incredible. And there's a lot of green oxide all over everything. And look here. This is still liquid. What is this liquid that's coming out of here? It's still it's still liquidy. I'm afraid to touch it because I really don't know if it's water. And it's almost like water got in here. And, and started corroding the copper, turning it into copper oxide, green copper oxide. I've just never seen anything quite like that. Look at how the connector exploded out. So the goal for today is to repair this circuit board. I really think I can bypass this connector and get this to work. So, okay, the solder job is done. These are the pins. So we've got 12 volt on the end there, which is the last pin. So you see the P1, that's pin 1, 2, and 3. That's 3.3 volt. And then the next three are ground, the next three are 5, the next three are ground, the next three are 5. We do not use the 3.3 volt um, just because this style connector does not supply it. We do not need it for this application. So it may not even be connected to anything. I really don't know. Um, to be honest, it could be some other reason for using or not using that. 3.3 volts, but yep. So let's put this back together. Fire it up. See if it works. All right. So uh, before I put this together, um, Steve in the chat room says, uh, "Why don't you see if it works first? Well, the way these are built, which I thought was interesting, so I figured I'd show it. Okay. There's a set of pins. This goes to the reed head. Okay. And then this set of pins goes to the stepper motor driver. Now you can actually connect this 
stepper motor driver. It's a brushless motor in here. You can actually hook this up to like a RC servo or an RC uh, brushless controller and get this guy to spin up, which is pretty cool. Um, and then here is, like I said, the heat, the, the reed heads. And then here's the circuit board. So you can see the reed head pins right here. They look a little oxide on them. I should probably clean them up, but there's those pins. And then over here is the motor driver pins. Now, there is a heat sink on this chip. I found it interesting that the little gel heat thing actually has a part number on it, which is rather interesting. Never seen that before, because it sits against this contact. Actually, it sits against that contact. Yeah, I don't see a number on there. See? So, anyway. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. So, that just fits on here, and screws down and holds everything in place, holds those contacts in place. Now some of you smart cookies out there will go, Russ, just find another hard drive like this and then switch out the board. Well, you can't really do that. In order to do that on newer drives like this one, you actually have to reprogram the actual um, firmware on this guy to read and write correctly to this drive, which is a process that I do not have access or tools or even knowledge to know how to do, to be honest. So um, there's a really cool guy on YouTube who publishes um, data recovery, and he shows the whole process, and it, it's just brilliant. So I'll link that guy in the description. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have known that, actually, unless I was watching his. And he's actually repaired a lot of drives and found out that the initial feed diodes and stuff like that go out a lot. So if this drive doesn't boot up, I'll be checking the diodes. And if that doesn't work, we'll see what's next. But as far as I'm concerned, I really think this will work. So let's give it a go. All right, well, I was having pretty high hopes. The drive is not working, so it is a, it is a fail. But it was well worth the effort that I went through to just solder these on there and give it a go. Because uh, if it did fire up, well, I don't know if I would trust the drive, but at least you could pull data off of it if you wanted to. Now, there's nothing on here that I need, so um, I'm not real concerned about getting this drive working. This was a, a no-loss situation for me. Um, but I may actually contact the gentleman I mentioned that does data recovery and ask him um, what the steps would be, because he seems like a pretty nice guy. I think he would at least help. You know, what would be the next steps? And it's probably put a new circuit board on there and all that fun stuff. But I do not have a spare one to play with. Um, I did check the diodes. Um, I checked some of the other components around the inputs here. And I imagine what happened with as bad as this connector looks, the grounds uh, and the power probably shorted together and actually fed power to the grounds. And in that case, if it made it all the way to the um, the chip on here, the actual controller chip, it's done. Done! So anyway, uh, that's all I got for you. Peace and love. I'll leave you with a couple of very close-up shots of the components because I'll, uh, I'll just put them on here. So let me know what you guys think. This was totally random, but I thought it was very interesting and it was worth, worth the try. God bless you guys. Have a good day. I'll see you next time. All right, I decided to grab a few better close-up shots of the circuit board before I got started. So here is uh, here is the damage. It's just incredible what happened to the circuit board and the connector melted completely off the back there. Oh, too close. Let's look at the connector real quick as well. Maybe different lighting here. I mean, I've never... It's hard to see on black, but I've just never seen such a thing. I've dealt with a lot of computers, but and there's still water in it, so it almost had to get water in it. All right, let's try to repair it now. Better lighting here. Let's 
it's pretty incredible look how it just melted that open and the, the connector here Yep. Very interesting. Big time disaster. Peace out.